Now Brian presents a new challenge. I might do just a little swing in here and see if he can stand that. And I'll see about, see if I can put that on there without hitting him in the face. And I'll, I'll just, as I come forward, just let that go. And it's kind of scary. And you can see that it's troubling to him a little. So I'll just put just a little pressure till, till he finds his way toward me. See, he keeps thinking his answer is out of here, but the answer's right there. The horse turns to Brian for reassurance, a critical breakthrough. Now he might reach for me. Let's see if he come in here. I'll see if I can get another half a step without scaring him. See how he's reaching for me? Now here's a spot where you want to watch your ears because some of them will They'll take a run at you. Now I'll just wait here till he reaches. Like that. See him smelling me instead. Of... There's the first, second time he's ever been touched by a human, or he touched a human, I guess, instead. Of... Now again, let's see if this head shaking will, will uh, disappear. I'll just keep a little tension there, and I'll see if he'll reach for me. And pretty soon I'll reach for him, like right there. We sort of met one another. A little bit of touch in there. A little bit more here. See, he's finding out he can touch me and reach for me now. In a horse, there's a spot in there where they can just turn loose emotionally. As you can see in their eye and their face a change that comes over them. And they'll begin to drop their head and their eyes will soften and you can just see that they're beginning to trust you. And then you can move right on and really advance then. I'll get my weight shifted back. He's feeling a whole lot better about things now. He's finding out I can touch him and he won't get hurt. Less than half an hour after the first touch, Brian tests the saddle. It's kind of important to swing this on so that it doesn't hit him. So this grab will gradually just lays right over on their back like that. I don't mind seeing one buck with the saddle because being a prey animal, that's his responsibility to not let anything stay up there. That's where the predator has the best advantage. If he can get above and stay with him, then he can have himself a meal. Pretty dreamy now, but we'll see what he's like when he feels that saddle on there. I'd rather he test the saddle out before I get on than, than after I get up there. Now I'm gonna move him off, but ever so softly if I can. I'm not trying to make him buck. Okay, maybe I'll give him a little consoling. Did you get scared, Bolly? It's been less than two hours since Brian began work, a fairly routine first session. He'll leave the saddle in place for a few more hours then give the young stallion a well-earned rest until morning. Yesterday's fear gives way to recognition and trust. Today will be another turning point. 
Social animals feel safest in a group. As a comfort to the young stallion, Brian has corralled several other horses. See, if he wiggles, I'll just wait here till he stands put. Pet him over here as if it was my leg and maybe get myself kind of set here before he gets untracked. I might let him go right out that way. And I'll just ask him to go if he gets upset. If he gets scared, wants to run, I'll just try to go with him. People ask me about uh, this new way of working with horses. As far as I know, it's been around as long as there's been horses and men interacting with one another. I don't know how the first man could ever got on a horse for the first time without having something working for him. I'll get a little bolder as he gets a little more confidence. I'll ask him here to come back to me with this rain little, and he, and he did. The young stallion's first ride lasts no more than 15 minutes and prompts a simple reward. Hey, kid. This just kind of soothes them sometimes, give them a little hugging. This is a place where they, a lot of them just can't stand you have that close. And if you can show them that it's okay to, to uh, be this close, why it's a real relaxing, soothing kind of thing for them. They really have to trust you. By day three, it's time to abandon the security of the corral. A whole new life is beginning for the young stallion. He gets to trust me a whole lot more today, I see. And Brian is left to ponder an age-old mystery about the nature of horses. I often wondered how in the world would they allow somebody to get up on their back and guide them around. They'll take us miles and miles till they're totally, you know, tired, pull wagons and pack loads and all kinds of things. When actually they could kick us or hurt us or buck us off any time, and yet they'll just work their hearts out for us if it's presented to them in a way that they can understand. Pretty special animal, really. Special indeed. No more than 60 years before the first moon landing, the world was driven by horsepower. Every sector of the economy relied on him. Transport and trade, industry and agriculture. No creature served us better in the building of civilization or its occasional overthrow. For millennia, the war horse prevailed in battle. If not for a horse, would Alexander have been great? Who can imagine Attila the Hun or Napoleon on foot? Over a million horses served in World War I. Nearly a third died. In World War II, Tens of thousands perished in a battle of bullets and bombs. The age of horsepower was over. And yet there are more horses in the world today than during the 1800s, 
some 62 million. In an age of technology, perhaps we yearn all the more for the touch of something wild. The horse is no longer changing our world, but he can still change lives, one at a time. In central Georgia, Carol Woolley has loved horses since she was a child. In 1995, a friend told her about an old school horse who had seen better days as a fox hunter and jumper. Are you feeling good? His name was Carousel, and he needed a home. Carousel was in his mid to late 20s, a little lame, about 100 pounds overweight. He was a little sway back, just a good, quiet lesson pony. You like a goodie? Carol took good care of him. Local children rode him. Soon, Carousel was a favorite. In 1996, two weeks after the Summer Olympic Games, the Paralympics came to Atlanta. Some 3,500 athletes attended. For the first time, equestrian events were included. 16 nations sent teams. It was up to event organizers to provide horses for 62 athletes with a wide range of disabilities. Each would be judged on precision, smoothness, and harmony of horse and rider while performing a set pattern in the arena. A call went out to horse owners for calm, well-trained mounts. Carol Woolley volunteered two of her younger horses, but games officials were desperate for more. She thought twice, then sent for old Carousel as well. After a checkup, he was quickly put to the test. Now, later in the day, they called him for Denmark, and I met Britta Anderson, who was a very small woman in a wheelchair, and I thought to myself, there's no way she's going to ride this pony. She spoke English quite well, and I asked her, have you ever fallen off a horse? And she smiled and looked at me and said, many times. Far from falling, on the day of competition, Britta and Carousel took Carol by surprise. Anderson of Denmark. Anderson. Britta and Carousel made a, a connection. He knew exactly what she wanted, and she knew how to get the most out of him. And he loved her. I'm still not sure how she did it, but they were just a perfect match. The judges agreed. The pair took first place in their division and received the highest score of all the competitors. From Denmark, Britta Andersen, riding Midlands Carousel, owned by Carol Woolley. When they won the gold medal, it was this little pony and a horse trainer from nowhere, and a world-class rider, and the thought that they actually won that gold and they earned it, it was probably one of the high points of my life. By the time she returned home, Carol had decided to start a therapeutic riding school. Horseback riding can improve balance and muscle tone, as well as a sense of independence and self-esteem in people with all sorts of disabilities. For Carol, there's no greater reward than to see someone like 13-year-old Sarah take her first ride. We got you now, kid. You're riding, kid. You want your when you take a child out of a wheelchair and put him on a horse, he's immediately taller. The walk of a horse mimics 
the same movement you get to actually walk on your own legs. It gives them a freedom of mobility. It gives them control over something that they may have never known before. They can control where they're going. <laughs> Carol runs the school on grants, donations, and volunteers. And Carousel heads her fleet of gentle horses past their prime. In August of 1998, at a regional show for riders with disabilities, Carol decides to send Carousel into the arena one last time. Nine-year-old Sean Donaldson, one of Carol's top students, has never competed before. It's a breathless moment for his parents. Make the old man proud. He got a good horse on him, though. He knows what to do. Young boy and old horse are picture perfect and take a blue ribbon. In first place, Sean Donaldson. From a first for Sean, a final trophy for Carousel. The competition concludes with a ceremony. As a symbol of retirement, Carol removes the saddle from a little horse of unknown breeding who has meant so much to so many. To him go the full laurels of a champion. He was quite calm, stood through everything. He 